Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are joining us for the Digital Twins in Oil and Gas. My name is Nicole Bamford, and I am the moderator for today's session. On behalf of Leslie, Angeliki, Quinn, and I, we thank you for joining us over the next two days. This presentation, Business Continuity by a Simple and data-rich digital twins will be given by David Laud, CEO at Virum, and his presentation promises to be well worth a listen. Before we get started, here are some quick administrative points. During the webinar, if you have questions for the presenter about anything raised during the webinar, please submit them in the Q&A box on your screen, and these will be answered after the session in the Q&A. Likewise, for any technical issues, please write them into the Q&A section on your screen and we'll get to them right away. The widgets on your screen can be resized and dragged around. We encourage you to visit the Resource Center on your screen for additional content and resources we and our sponsors have provided for you. So make sure you're sitting comfortably and now I'll hand it over to David so we can begin. Thank you, Nicole, and good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us. My name is David Laud. I'm the Chief Executive Officer at Virum. Virum is a company headquartered in Calgary, Alberta. We have clients on our digital twin platform uh, that go across from Singapore to South Africa to the U.S. as well as Canada as we continue to grow. And today what we're going to talk about is really driving and improving business continuity um, through simple and rich digital twins. We'll talk a little bit about what we're seeing in the industry overall. We'll talk about some of the commodity changes and how that's affecting digital twin implementation. And we'll also talk about some real specific use cases around how to leverage digital twin technology across the entire asset lifecycle, whether that's through planning, design, and engineering through your construction where there's some significant gains to be had all the way through handover into operations and the maintenance, and then fundamentally at the end, potentially decommissioning and or brownfield and turnaround activities as well. So when we go back and we look at as organizations, what are we getting from digital twins? You know, look at this point all the way back to, you know, data is the beginning of value. It's what we're getting in order to create information, in order to make informed decisions using, you know, the human element of creativity in order to drive better productivity and better process evolution within our organizations, right? We all learn from visuals more than we learn from text. We'll talk about some of that as well. But when you look about data and how it can drive information, think of it this way. You can have data without information but you can't have information without data. So you gotta go all the way back to where is all of those critical data points and all of that information that your organization, that your team, that your colleagues may have, and how do we start to elevate that and make it available across the entire enterprise? And how do we do that with digital twin technologies such as yours? So if you look back all the way to the 1400s, 1440 to be exact, one of the probably the most significant technological invention was the printing press. So arguably, definitely one of the top inventions. And what that enabled people to do was to get information, valuable information into the hands of many, into thousands, tens of thousands, and into millions. Previously having, having to use a scribe to write a book and then followed by a second copy and a third copy, we weren't able to distribute that information fairly across the masses so that people could make informed decisions around whether it was governments, whether it was healthcare, whether it was you know, productivity gains. This was really a fundamental piece in understanding that data and information available to everyone really improved society and let us take those significant gains. So when you look at adopting a digital twin technology, it's very similar to a printing press or anything else, it's how do we take traditionally siloed data, which could be your engineering documentation, which could live in you know, your CAD and Autodesk environment. You could have your geospatial information, which you know, could be your LIDAR scans, photogrammetry scans, stuff that's captured in the field, your real-time environment, generally siloed and not available. And you'll have traditional document management, whether it's what are the assets out there? You know, what is their warranty information, their operating procedures? Where does that live in my organization? And then as we get into these 
living documents and these IoT-based sensors, how can we bring all of this, instead of having it in little bunches where people can't really access and see it, bring it all the way to the top and make it very simple for everybody to log in, to view it and make informed decisions like they've never been able to before. So the first start of that journey and in business continuity as well is you have to get your historical data lined up and in place in order to capture the next stuff and start building it in proper building blocks. So we want to understand what you have. Let's look at what you have. Now, it might seem like a monumental task to say, we're going to take this large oil and gas company, we're going to provide digital twin instance for all of its physical assets. And I can tell you it's not as difficult as you may think. Let's see what you have today. And I can promise you with all the clients that we've dealt with, that there's actually more data there that's available that you may not even believe uh, exists. And we can help you find that, bring it and elevate it uh, in a very quickly, quick fashion to start driving value. Because this is really all about a few layers. The first one is about aggregating your data to make sure you see it at an asset level to see what's really happening. But what we're trying to change here, what you guys and your organizations are trying to do is really cause a cross enterprise integrated workflow across the entire asset life cycle and beyond. And it requires accessible data, complete data and proper organized data in order to maximize your existing investments. And those investments aren't necessarily your, just your facilities and your pumps and your schools and everything you put in from a capital perspective, but it's the existing infrastructure and systems that you're using today in order to maximize their true value is how do you link those up into a common viewing environment. So as leaders of you know, our oil and gas institutions and our companies here, you know, it's all about giving our employees and our colleagues the right tools in order for them to learn, in order for them to stay productive. So if you're handing over someone information in a textual format, whether that's 2D, whether that's spreadsheets, they are not going to be able to learn as quickly and to retain that valuable information as quickly. It's your role as leaders to make people more effective with the data that they're seeing. So by presenting that data that you have in a 3D context, such as the image on the screen here, you are more likely by 90% you know, that's how you transmit visuals from the brain, but 60,000 times, 60,000 times faster to comprehend the data that you're being seen and a 400% retention improvement rate on what you've actually learned and taken in. So now you're giving the information in order to do the right processes, the right procedures, to make the right decisions. You're giving that data in a consumptive way that makes sense to humans, right? So if you are going to try to drive productivity, improve safety, you need to deliver the information in a context that makes sense for the humans that are working on site with you. So one of the questions that we throw out when we talk to clients, they say, okay, this sounds great. We want to go after a digital twin implementation. What systems is this replacing right now? So how can I draw the right ROIs that I'm eliminating this system or that system? Uh, in order to take this technology on. And what we can tell you is if you're looking at digital twin adoption with the question and the primary question of what systems or applications will this replace, you're missing the opportunity, okay? This is a primary system that you do not currently have. You may have ArcGIS, you may have some Esri systems, you could have some Hexagon PPM and smart plant review systems. This is a primary layer that will connect everything you've already invested in to make it far more productive, to let your employees work quicker, more efficiently, to improve safety. And then what you're gonna see is in a lot of these legacy applications, you'll be able to stop, start to drop various components of licensing and save money through that application. But you need to view this as a game-changing productivity tool and from a business continuity perspective, it's never been more important. You need to be able to be on site without going to the site. And we'll show you how to do that. So when you look at what the Virum Digital Twin Instance does, we will take in all of your existing CAD models, 2D or 3D. 
We'll bring in all your geospatial data, so your reality scans, survey scans, whether that could be your UAV drone flights, laser or photogrammetry. We'll connect in with all your asset information, so you may already have, whether it's document management systems such as SharePoint or otherwise. And then look at real construction and operating data, okay? What is happening in the field in real time? So it's a connection between the legacy of what you were trying to build what has been built or is being built, and then what is being operated. A fundamental system that can view it all and that can put layers over time in there so that you can actually make very well-informed decisions and move the process along quicker. Because what we're seeing now is a lot of, whether it was maintenance or whether it was brownfield construction or even greenfield construction sites, they were put on pause through COVID-19 and when you put a construction project of that scale on pause and you lose that momentum, and if you do that you know, midstream, it is a monumental feat to get it back on schedule and on track because you've, you've flattened out and you've exhausted a lot of the energy and that momentum through that construction process. So how can you use digital twin technology such as VIRMS to start to do remote bidding, remote collaboration, maintenance and planning out in the field without actually going on site so that you can resurrect these projects very quickly so that you can ensure that your third-party contractors, EPCs and GCs can have access to the information, access to a digital twin environment and a 3D model so that they can start to do the proper bidding, the scoping, and you can see the true environment initially need to see without actually being on site to continue your project's evolution. And one of our claim to fame here and a true differentiator is we can be live and operational in 48 hours after receiving your data. And the simple data is just your CAD files that you have for existing facilities, whether it's well pads, whether it's refineries, um, whether it's your tailings and fluids, uh, pump houses, and any um, scan you may have, whether that's a survey scan that's been done with traditional survey methods, drone flights, laser scans, we can bring those together and show you what you're intending to build, what you have, what's actually there, um, and we can give you real-time progress and reports if you're in active construction, and then it becomes an incredible tool in operations and maintenance uh, going forward, so full asset life cycle. So when you look at all the various asset phases here through planning all the way into maintenance, there's a variety of different use cases. And what the platform here does, and this is when you think about how do we continue operations, look at all the stakeholders that you have through your entire organization, whether it's in supply chain, whether it's engineering, and that could be third party or that could be within your company. You know, how do you do model reviews, um, you know, how do you have your third party construction groups starting to look at their lay down yards, do your advanced work packaging, and then, you know, maintenance at handover, who picks this up and how does this work now? So the way that we operate our licensing model is one common license for the asset owner that can be opened up to any of the third parties that they're using. So it's not a per seat license. It doesn't become very cost detrimental to be adding more people. This is what I talked about earlier, elevating data that's traditionally siloed out of those silos up into a common, um, a common layer where everyone can view it together. Okay, so big value starts to come out of that. So you get you know, improved model reviews. Uh, we have an example of one client where they're in active construction where they had a, um, you know, over a dozen engineers uh, in various parts of the world that are working on a project and they were unable to get in remotely through COVID over the VPN to access their CAD environment and do proper model reviews with everybody looking at it. So they uploaded over 200 CAD files to the Virum system because we're completely web-based. So no software, no hardware required. All you need is the laptop that you're using today or potentially a Surface tablet. 
And then you can start to manipulate these very complex 3D models in an enlarged scale. You can overlay big geospatial data sets, right? We've put in 500 mile geospatial data sets with CAD integrated within the model too as a layer. And these flow very well. It's almost like a video game model. So imagine now, instead of having that clunkiness and having to step away from your computer as you wait 20 minutes for your proper files to load, being able to immediately access them, immediately collaborate, share views, have everybody on an instance like this or on Zoom, where you can look in the model together and start to make decisions and start to do your plan. It becomes a great tool and a great step forward. So from an architectural point of view, and this can be you know, your client, this could be yourselves as an example, um, when you look at all those, that asset data in the bottom left, whether it's 2D, 3D, and 4D being, you know, whether that's schedule, whether that's cost against certain components that could be integrated, and then your traditional 2D documents, PDFs, pictures, um, any of those file types. And then you're going to have your operational data at the top. And then some of those could be applications. It could be your OSI Pi SCADA data. It could be using IBM Maximal from a workflow perspective. And then you're likely linked into some type of data lake, whether that's you know AWS, Azure, Google, or otherwise, or potentially something um, on-premise within your organization. And then you see your workers on the right. Now, they're trying to aggregate and bring together all of these siloed sets, all of the application and active working data, and they're trying to leverage the tools in these hyperscale cloud providers. And what the digital twin does is it brings it all together and gives you the common interface that everybody can work on, depending on which area that you'd like them to be working on. And you can close work scopes for various other groups. So if you do have third party engineering and you'd only like them to see a certain facility or a certain segment or certain CAD files, you as an organization can set those rules to see who has access to what making it very secure and very private. And you can open up the entire um, digital twin instance um, to various people in your organization that need that level of detail. So now we get into delivering information, like in the top there, in that 3D context that everybody learns you know, and retains information properly. Because now you need to communicate to site Maybe there's one individual there, two or three, where there historically may have been 15. You say, pump A34 seems to have a pressure leak. Do you know where A34 is? Now, if they do, that's great. If they need you know, to be refreshed, they can look right in the digital twin platform and have a geo reference to an actual location where they can walk to. They'll know where the fire extinguishers are. They'll know the safest route because you'll be able to mop that, map that out. You can also look at the undergrounds uh, within those facilities where we have buried cable. Um, because the dangerous piece now is if you've got someone in your organization that says, I can find anything in there just by walking around, that's great. But that person will not be in your organization forever. This is about a continuity of education, a continuity of safety, where we let people find the information, search it out, and make the right decisions based on the environment that they're in. So we need to really start to invest in these tools in order for businesses to continue to operate safely um, and to move that forward. And if you think about it, and just attracting the next levels of talent within your organization, you know, New, new graduates, you know, everybody that wants to participate and look at, you know, what we call oil and gas um, as maybe not the sexiest business to participate. They have the opportunity to invest in these tools, which are generally and actually very lightweight, easy to use, easy to implement. And they can be an attractive positioning point to retain and bring in new talent and to work on platforms such as these. So one of the biggest challenges that we see um, through asset lifecycle management, but specifically in that data and information is a significant information loss that happens at construction into handover. And if you look at you know, McKinsey's research that's been done, they'll tell you that around 30% of valuable data created in the construction and design phase is lost at project closeout. Okay, and if you look at the top right of that graph, what that shows is 
that dotted line that keeps going, that's the information that you need to make the right decisions. That's valuable information to your company. And as you do brownfield and turnaround and operations, it's data that you probably have to go back and buy again or source again or capture again, and it's getting lost. So now you need a common repository for the historicals of decisions that got made through planning, design, and engineering through construction because your CAD file that you started with probably had many iterations through construction as well, and you may not have a fundamental great as built at the end of the day. So you need to do the right scan, do a laser scan on your existing facility, and now with you know, Virum's technology, you can create amazing as built with what we call user-created objects, where now you can go in in the twin on your, on your Surface tablet and start to add in, this is a pump, this is what the, what the information is, uh, take photos, start to enrich this model over time. So it's about putting in the fundamentals, that basic system here right now, that can collect all this data and you enrich it over time by connecting all of your other information and siloed sets and making it this very powerful, very data rich platform uh, going forward. So asset visualization, I'm gonna talk a little bit about this and then we're gonna uh, jump into a video, a two minute video, which will show you a little bit about Verum's platform and how it can be used for remote collaboration. But you know, in summary here, aggregate your existing data into a common 3D viewing environment and 3D bringing in your 2D files as well. You want a very simple and user intuitive controls for simple user adoption, right? And we got to open this up to your unlimited users across your organization. You don't want only certain people to have access. You want to make this basically a library and a visualization. This is the movie of your company. You want to share this. You want people to be working safely with it. And you want to help reduce the need for restrictive, risky, and expensive site visits, right? Field collaboration that can be done remotely safely from either your homes or the office is going to be paramount going forward. Uh, and you'll see more drivers to that. And then you really want, you know, a system of record, but you want a platform that can link into any systems of record you've already made investments in so that you can operate these assets all the way through. Your assets are globally distributed with many stakeholders. How can you make data-informed decisions from the safety and convenience of your home without the need to travel to site or other offices? How can owners ensure safe and well-managed execution while improving collaboration with their contractors? How can teams remotely share data and reduce restrictive and expensive travel? Asset information is often siloed, unreliable, and difficult to find. Asset stakeholders are often forced to make decisions based on gut and experience with no visual context or verification. Virum's Asset Visualization Solution aggregates all asset information, designs, and digitized reality into a simple-to-use 3D viewer. Stakeholders can virtually visit their site from anywhere in the world through a web browser and always have access to the latest asset information. Enable remote collaboration while reducing the need for travel and face-to-face -face meetings. The platform is equipped with powerful tools and analytics to drive decision-making and add value across the entire asset lifecycle. Quality and progress are verified by matching design and reality. The latest site information and real-time IoT data are stored in the platform for total asset certainty. Instead of sending people to the site, deliver the site to the user with Virum's asset visualization platform. Access the site from your browser and collaborate with the rest of your team via video conference. Where are you on your digital transformation journey? Digitizing and visualizing your assets is the easiest initial step to enabling remote collaboration and execution. Access to verified data is essential for asset management in today's connected world. Virum is the world's platform to see itself. That's great. Um, 
So when we see that, you know, with the impacts of COVID-19, um, you know, there's a variety of things that are happening. You know, there's stuff on the on the budget side and there's stuff, you know, it, it's really about how are we enabling our teams and our employees to continue to perform business operations in a different capacity? How are we allowing them to collaborate? You know, the amazing uptake in uh, whether it's Zoom or Google Meets or, um, you know, Microsoft uh, Office's platform, um, you know, everybody was driven onto that, right? So the tailwinds of COVID are really going to push you know, the term is the new normal, but it becomes just an accelerated adoption uh, for digital technologies and digital transformation and organization. So we're going to talk a little bit about that, too, uh, as we go through this. But, you know, what Verum's platform allows you to do is it gives you remote access, visual confirmation of site conditions, and it gives you all the data that you traditionally haven't been able to get or requires you to walk down the office hallway and talk to the engineering group or call out to the field and talk to your geospatial organization or talk to somebody that's in workflow and process and supply and procurement areas. And we're bringing it all together so that you can make decisions and you can start to trust this environment and make this part of changing work. That's what this is about right now. It's changing the work process. So when you look to introduce these types of technologies, you got to look at how did an individual perform their role before to complete a certain task or project? And then on adopting a digital platform such as Verum's, what changed and how did they do it the next time? And then you got to look at what were the differences and then ask that individual or ask that work group and say, do you want to go back to the old way or do you want to leverage these digital tools? And, you know, 9.9 .9 times out of 10, they're going to say bigger gains, more access to data, far safer. Um, we had a couple little bumps in the road initially, but we know how to improve this. And that's the direction we want to go on. They, they don't want to go back. They don't want to go back to data mining and looking for details and, and having, you know, emails back and forth. They want to be able to work together in this style of environment. So when you're looking at what digital twin platform to pick, look at one that participates from planning all the way through operations and maintenance, one that can take in your IOT data, right? One that can link into your existing investments and systems and one that opens up the entire platform uh, to your whole company. And don't do a major undertaking with a platform that tells you it's gonna take six months to get this thing up and running, or we need you know, 10 people on your side and they all need to be subject matter experts and it's gonna be you know, 40 hours a week for the next six months. You don't have that amount of resource and time. You, none of us have left a boardroom recently where he said, we really want you to do less with more. It's always more with less. And that's about how to drive productivity out of an organization, out of its assets in order to perform performance and improve safety along the way. That's the thinking that you need to have as an organization to make them successful. So when you look at these steps around digital transformation and taking those, um, those steps, a lot of you right now are in the digital progressing area for sure. Right? You're thinking big, but you're starting small. You're trying to be agile. Agile and digital. All of this requires that your executive and your leader, that they say, this is how we're going to communicate. This is how we're going to work. We need a digital first initiative here. We'll support our legacy systems. We'll support our legacy employees. We'll support all of these things on this journey, but we need to go in this direction now because it's going to come down to a point where if you fall behind and you don't start to aggregate, collect, um, you know, and make sure you've got all this essential data now when you don't begin this journey, that you will be left behind. Because if you look at just technology, technological adoption, you know, some would say that we're overestimating the impact technology AI and ML is going to have in the next two to three years but we're drastically underestimating what it's going to do in the next 10. 
So we have an opportunity in our companies today to make the decisions to line us up for that rocket ship growth in digital, you know, through that next decade. And if you fall behind now or you take some missteps, um, you're going to be left behind. You may have similar assets, but you know, you do not want to be the apple in the bowl that has the bruise because you'll get picked last, right? Everybody needs to raise capital. Everybody needs to provide return to their shareholders. Everybody needs to be improving and moving along this journey, and it is going to go very quickly. So make sure you're making your uh, best steps right now and putting the right teams together to drive these initiatives forward. Because historically, where digital twins were falling down or any type of uh, you know adoption was one was it a technology technological uh, hurdle that had to be overtaken? Well, we now know the technology works; it's sound. Cloud computing is up, uh, up and running. It's totally scalable, and the networks are there in order to deliver this content. Right, so that. That barrier has been knocked over. Economical are the ROIs there. Is this feasible? Does this make sense from a, you know, returns to our company? Absolutely, we've proven that time and time again. We'll show you an example here uh, where we, you know, had an ROI over a thousand percent in under 60 days. That's tipped over. And then it becomes either a cultural or a regulatory challenge. It's, can we change the organization to work this way? So we're not quite full green yet, and there's certainly some yellow, but you know, with the tailwinds of COVID-19, with the you know, fundamental collapse of energy prices due to the supply challenges, which are starting to resurrect and correct, these are drivers in order to gain productivity and to change the way we do business. You can't unlock all of your working capital through the old methods. You can't just do the old things anymore. Technology is how you're going to game change and stair step past going forward. That cultural one is going to go green here. And if you've lined up uh, beside the right digital twin provider and with the other right platform providers um, and solutions, this will be a beneficial journey for your organization. So some of the other things we're seeing in the industries, so you'll say, well, how do I get these laser scans or how do I get this data capture from the field? That seems to be cost prohibitive, and that seems to be sort of an underpinning requirement to have a successful implementation. Well, I can tell you that the price of data capture in the field has gone significantly down. You're seeing new technologies come out where people can be non-subject matter experts with hand scanners that can capture this data. You know, you can do a, uh, a one square kilometer uh, facility in under two hours with some of these devices, internal facility and outside. So. The price of data capture going down, the quality of data capture is going up based on these devices. And you know this industry and these industries are gonna continue to grow because they're feeders of data which drive information into these models. And this is how you're gonna make them rich and you're gonna make them real time and make them incredibly visible. And digital twin adoption is only going to skyrocket here as a result of some of these uh, these changes out, in the, out with uh, data capture services. So today, when you're looking at picking the right platform, when you pick Virum's platform as an example, you're looking at it today at an asset level. You know, it's descriptive, it's informative, and we have some predictive an 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 uh, analytics as well. So whether it's in progress monitoring of construction. We can tell you if you're on time, whether you're falling behind, we can do it at a component level, whether it's mechanical, concrete, steel, uh, earthworks, cable tray. Um, there are you know, elements of digital twin platforms that have some predictive analysis for sure. Uh, and that's very important. You wanna make sure that the roadmaps align with where that's going. But you know, this is going to evolve, like I said, over the next decade into system level where it's prescriptive, what's happening in your environment, are the pressures changing on certain pumps and we need to do some maintenance in advance, right? There's technologies being developed there that can be plugged into a visualization layer like this, but it will become transformative over time where it's not what can it do, but oh wow, look at what it's doing, right? So today view it as you're not gonna jump into this fully transformative, it's doing all the work for us today. Today is about getting all the data together, lining up with the right platform that can scale and grow to tie into your existing investments, 
And as AI and ML plugins, you know, and data sets change and those libraries become available, it's leveraging and plugging them in. So today, as an example, Virum can leverage IBM's Watson for image detection recognition. So we can tell you if there's a flange, you know, or a spool there, we've got that capability. We plug into, you know, whether it's SAP and some of your existing ERP systems, you don't need to replace those. Those are big tasks. It's all about making it available to everyone and then following on the AI ML journey over time because it's going to come quick and it'll be exciting. And just another touch point here regarding build or buy. Um, we've talked to a variety of clients that tried to go down this journey on themselves to build their own digital twin environment. You know, it's not your own core competency. You'll need people to help perform this and to start bringing together some of that data. And there's a lot of great uh, consulting organizations that can do that. But you're not going to catch up and it's not going to scale. We've had some clients tell us that they spent the likes of 10 to $20 million over the last three years trying to build their own environment where they could have went and bought one. Um, and, and, you know, the payback period is going to be north of 20 to 25 years, and you don't want to be responsible for scaling a primary system that your organization has. You want to pick the best that's available there today and start to build and add best products and best IoT sensors within that environment. Okay. Now, where does Virum position itself? If you look in the very top right, large enterprise platforms, those are the Hexagons, the Bentleys, the Avivas, very industrial focused, very large scale, take a long time to implement, um, but they're great platforms. And then in the very bottom left, you've got you know, free 3D viewers to look at geospatial data, or maybe some of your CAD files. There is a huge spot in the middle, we call it 70, 80% of the market, that wants to be live in 48 hours, that they want lots of rich features, they want those baseline analytics, and they want to work with a team that has the industry expertise to get this moving and get their companies going forward. So we have clients in utilities, mining, oil and gas, leaning into manufacturing, and we can do stuff across the entire life cycle, but live in 48 hours. If you're looking to take a big win in digital transformation, we can show you how to get there. So three quick use cases, um, as I mentioned, we have one client that due to COVID has been shut down uh, on their site, but they need to get some bidding done from third party contractors on some work that needs to get done in the facility. And now what they're able to do is to clip out the environment, the CAD, the geospatial section, and then let the third party log into the system in order to start to make annotations, do measurements, and put and knock some of the contingency out of their bids, they've reduced their bidding from 10 days on a quote down to two in some cases. That's a huge gain of an entire week on getting your projects back up and running. Um, huge value right there. Uh, construction, virtual fit ups. You know, modulized construction is certainly prevalent and it is coming and you're starting to see large modules being constructed around the world or components that arrive on site that need to be bolted together in this particular example we had undersized pumps and schools at a tailings and fluids facility uh, what we were able to do is have the client ask the fabricator of the pumps and the spools to take a quick laser scan of these devices, we virtually assembled them within the facility and found out that they were in fact not cut flush and they weren't gonna fit. So they were chromium carbide uh, overlay. Uh, these can't be field fitted on a seven day critical outage window. Um, they would have discovered the tie in points weren't gonna match on day six. What they believe this saved them was one, uh, two to $3 million in lost revenues on a on a site that was producing 90,000 barrels a day, um, two reduced field exposure hours of two to 300 hours while they tried to fix and manually do this. And the safety component there was significant because had people in the field tried to just cowboy tie this up and put the system under pressure with the bolts, it likely would have sheared or blown off either in the next maintenance window or during production and been catastrophic. So de-risking critical projects can be done in this platform and then for the next turnaround procedure, you've got full access to this as well. So huge ROI for our clients, um, leveraging that. And then in operations and asset management, 
The data is all out there. It's all in these field sites. The ability to collaborate, look from the site, working with the people in the field, having 24 seven access to real time site information, enabling offsite training, right? Letting people do virtual walkthroughs before they go out to site. Uh, and linking all your traditional 2D documents into those environments becomes great for maintenance planning and starting to open up your environments again. So, you know, your digital methods, which we've talked about today, uh, improving safety, which is absolutely paramount, um, driving cost out of the business, driving more productivity is great versus, you know, traditionally traveling to site, fumbling with finding documentation, and not knowing which systems and where to pull these out. Put it all in a cloud-based layer, let everyone in access this over the internet and start to work differently and work safely. So we've had a variety of uh, um, you know, cases here. You can read some of the quotations that we've seen, whether it's been in mining sites, oil and gas sites, big gains uh, in productivity and safety. But it's all about a transformation of how to work differently to make sure you can continue to operate when events such as a pandemic occur, or perhaps you've got wildfires in the area and everyone needs to evacuate, whether you've got elements of, you know, a road gets washed away. How do you ensure that you can still be on site without going to site? making sure you can make the right decisions and not slow down and keep the processes available that still need to. This is how you enrich your business continuity model with digital twin adoption. So the final quote that I'll leave you with here today, we talked about this. This is all about data bringing it together and we live in a, in a time right now where information and data are becoming so abundant. So by visualizing information, we turn it into a landscape that you can explore with your eyes, a sort of information map. And when you're lost in information map, in inform when you're lost in information, an information map is kind of useful. This is what Virum's platform and digital twi twin technologies provide. It gives you the fundamental map, that 3D context to look at all of the information that's traditionally been not available uh, to your employees and to your organizations. So uh, with that, we'll hand it over to Nicole for some q and I believe we have a couple minutes left. And thank you very much for your time. We do, David. Thank you. So our first question is from Summit and asks, will existing systems like Operator Training Simulator, Assets Performance Management, Advanced Process Control be qualified as some kind of digital twin? Yeah, I think those... Um, Certainly what you've mentioned there, and I'll just read the yeah, advanced process controls, um, they would qualify as feeders and valuable data that can be you know, existent in their own twin platform, but really we need to link into a larger primary system that can aggregate all of these, right? So this is not about um, you know, replacing operating training simulations, but you can enhance those tr uh, training simulation software by having additional context to your actual environments, uh, bringing in other information sets within that, but it's all about linking all of these together. So digital twin is a strange word because I think it's been overused and um, you know, in a variety of in industries. It's about creating a virtual context or a real time replica of what's happening in the field with legacy systems and real time operating systems of which those would link in and could could fall into those categories. Great, thank you, David. Keith asks, very good presentation, material and communication. Can you tell us how analytics is integrated to garner knowledge from all the data? Uh, analytics as an example, so I'll even talk about a specific case in progress monitoring through construction. So, um, You'll have your CAD files, and if you look at you know your 2D and 3D models of what you're intending to build, and then you add that 4D layer component, or this uh, in order to achieve um, a certain percent complete over time. So here's some analytics examples. We can now take in your CAD 2D, 3D, and 4D file, 
And if you're doing a laser scan or a photogrammetry scan within your facility or on an earthworks project, as an example, that very uh, day, the very next day, we can tell you whether you are on plan or off plan and by what percent against every component, whether it's earthwork, steel, concrete, or otherwise. And you can break those down into individual pieces or you can roll it up to a full uh, project plan. But you can also see if it was installed correctly. This is the big piece on progress monitoring. Because if you have put something in and it's off by maybe a degree or two, our analytics will capture it and say that that's actually installed and out of tolerance. You can't count it as progressing. It needs to be replaced or re-engineered. And that's where we can catch and deliver valuable analytics the very next day because you may not find out about that challenge for another three weeks or a month, and then it's too late and you've got to pull back a project and start to take things down again. So those analytics um, exist. That's key information, and that's what platforms like Virums do today. Perfect. So we have time for one more. So Malika asks, what is the 48-hour turnaround time based on? Surely size of organization or asset and com complexity will impact on this turnaround time. Wonderful question. Um, we digitized an entire mine site in South Africa, 12 square kilometers, so four by three that had um, a variety of dams, a variety of crushing stations. It had all of that, and we were live in 48 hours, and they started to use that in their uh, sprint and construction planning going forward. So what we can be live with is all of your CAD files, as well as any geospatial data that you have within that set. We'll bring it together and create that digital instance for you. And then beyond that 48 hours, we'll start to link into whether you want your document management systems or your SCADA systems introduced within that environment. Though that's part about enriching it over time, but we can get you the fundamental layer and get you into the environment in 48 hours. Great. Thanks so much, David. Thank you for an interesting and informative webinar. For those in the audience, if you want to listen again, this webinar will be available on demand shortly. And finally, thank you, wherever you are, for taking the time to listen in. And remember to check out more of our upcoming and on-demand webinars at oilandgasiq.com. Thanks again, David. Thank you very much.